Jakub Arbes was a Czech writer and journalist. Born in 1814 in Prague, the son of shoemaker Jan Arbes and Anna Winklerová, he studied at the Prague Polytechnic School before becoming a writer. In 1867 he married Josefa Rabochová. That same year he joined the Haas magazine. Then in 1868 he became editor on the National Papers magazine. His articles resulted in him in spending 15 months in prison. After his release, he worked for various magazines, even served as a dramatist in the Provisional Theatre, before finding work mainly as a writer. He was one of the key figures of the Romanetta movement, his first being the 1866 the Devil on the Rack. He is most well known for his mystery story Saint Xaverius and Newton's Brain, where a man creates a time machine using, you guessed it, Newton's Brain. He died in Prague in 1914. Today we will review one of his later works, his 1895 The Last Days of Humanity. The novel is sort of a mess. It is supposed to be about a woman who goes mad in church, while listening to an apocalyptic sermon. However, to start off, the main character and narrator is Arbes' anonymous writer stand-in, and he does not know the woman and only has maybe one conversation with her. After witnessing her going mad in church and tearing her clothes off, the narrator takes a stroll for a certain palace garden and finds there a priest, the same priest who delivered the fiery sermon which drove the woman mad. They talk, and find that the priest's younger brother was a friend to the narrator in years gone by. He is dead now, but the two still have a lengthy conversation about old times, though the man of God is much older. The narrator eventually asks about the woman and finds out the priest had already made inquiries about her at the psychiatric hospital. But this plot thread is shoved aside as Arbes relates his own personal memories of the Prague Uprising of 1848, and then has the priest narrate his own life in great detail. The narrator then, based on information that other people provide, proceeds to create a fictional account of what he thinks the woman's life had been, which somehow seems entirely accurate, despite him never speaking to the woman again. He is able to somehow accurately depict her home life and the infatuation of the priest's brother towards her, who happened to live in the same vicinity. He also seems to rightly deduce that the general thought is that during a swoon she had been raped by the priest's brother, but well, this didn't happen. But everyone, from the woman to the priest, seem convinced it did, because the woman's son bears a resemblance to the priest's brother. This causes the woman to demand the infant's removal under threat of violence, resulting in her never seeing her son again. But again, this potentially tragic idea of a mother refusing to ever see her own son, based on a suspicion that is totally wrong, is abandoned. Instead, we focus on the priest and his quest in the palace archives for what he assumes will be a surefire cure for the woman's insanity, despite the actual physician being more than sceptical. But this soon stops being the focus too, and we have to endure the priest going on about all the friends he had in prior writing circles back in the day, and then about the man who supposedly authored said miraculous manuscript, the semi-forgotten inventor Georg Franz August Graf von Bukoy whom the priest adores to an unhealthy degree. After several hundred pages, he finally finds the paper, but his attempt to cure the woman is an embarrassing failure. And then when she is cured by actual medicine, and not the cherished manuscript, we cut forward to the woman's funeral, and the narrator sees her son and husband behind the hearse, but of course never engages them, because we can't focus on the interesting characters who are actually tied to the tragedy at hand. Instead, Arbes has the nameless woman and the priest die, not giving them anything to do. The whole novel seems to always focus on the wrong thing, such as devoting about 15 pages to describing a hand. And finally, the manuscript itself is rather bizarre. Basically, Bukoy seems to have thought that a gradual increase of oxygen in the atmosphere would result in human lifespan growing shorter and shorter until we would go extinct, but for some reason being happy and content as we all die, saying a future where a person would die as soon as he was born is somehow idyllic and utopian. 